I'm here with uh, Nika Panagia, who stars as Jean in the new uh, romantic comedy Confetti. Uh, Nika, thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you, sir. Lovely to be here. Thank you for watching, wherever you are and whatever you're watching on. <laughs> and however you're watching this. <laughs> uh, tell us about your character, Jean, in the film. Jean is... Um, he is a, a very selfish character. He starts out selfish and he ends uh, with a realisation that he's quite selfish. Um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's the typical guy that has lived his whole life um, by numbers. He has certain goals and he's achieved them and everything exists in his life because of um, a need to um, uh, just fill the gaps. Nothing has happened organically or through passion necessarily, it's more because of that's what's right, that's the car you should be driving, that's the girl you should be marrying, that's the job you should be in. And, um, and in the end, what, what, what lacks is, you know, if you live your life painting by numbers, you, you, you miss a certain very um, incredible essence of life, and, and, and that is when, it's, when, it, when, it, when it writes itself, when it happens organically. And uh, so you force yourself into ways rather than organically going where naturally you should be going. And I think that's 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 his problem in the film. So that's where we pick up on John, mm. and um, and through the progress of the, f of the of the film, he obviously comes to realise this. Everyone has a has a journey, um, especially in this film. Everyone has a journey. So so he's a, not a, not a selfish. I, I know I started saying selfish, but more a self-involved, not self-obsessed either, not narcissistic necessarily, just self-involved mm, mm. character. The kind of character that always needs to win and needs to absolutely, at the end. absolutely, always needs to win. Very competitive, um, and, uh, and 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 perhaps insecure in that. And you know, most guys who are incredibly competitive often um, can't handle not winning, so making them fairly insecure. Mm -hmm. um, so so a self-involved, insecure guy doesn't sound very attractive, does it? <laughs> I take it you don't identify very much with the character. I, I freaking hope not. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, what do you think, in the film, um, your character Jean is marrying um, Katie Bedonin's character, um, Cheryl. What do you think, and I think he, he loves her in his, in his own way, and she loves him in, in her own way, but I mean, by the end of the film we realise that not as much as she should love him to marry him. What do you think it is about the characters that put them in that situation where they're willing to marry each other when they, they're not really ready or looking to really get married? Well, paint by numbers, you know, filling in the gaps. I think that's that's the answer to exactly that situation. I think many people find themselves in that situation where they've gone with um, what they think everyone else will think is the right way to live their lives, uh, whether it be, like I said, business or or a partner, a spouse. And so I think they find themselves, look, there's a big, huge difference between loving someone and being in love with someone. Mm -hmm. In love, you can't orchestrate that. You can't. You can pull all the strings, but if the chemistry doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So yeah. you end up loving one another, caring for one another, being uh, um, uh, comfortable in one another's company, but you're not necessarily passionately uh, attracted to that particular person and passionately in love with that person. I think many people make that mistake as they, they, uh, and they find themselves standing in front of the altar mm -hmm. in that situation. And, uh, and, 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 you know, this is where our characters find themselves. How they get out of it, you've got to watch the movie. <laughs> so it's like they, they get to a position where it's a case of, I'm not going to use the phrase that they use in, in certain mm. films, but they get to a position where either you break up or get married. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's exactly what it is. I think, I think also time becomes, you know, your worst enemy because, you know, and you get pressure from all sides, whether it be family or, or, or just society as well, is, is pressures us into having attained certain goals at a certain age. And, um, you know, the one thing I love about human nature is, you know, Baz Luhrmann, he once said in the sunscreen song, I don't know if you, if you know mm -hmm. it, uh, he, he said, uh, you know, the, the, the race is long. Sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind. But in the end, the race is only with yourself. Yeah. So we often judge ourselves, or allow ourselves to be judged by society, by where everyone else is. And, and, and you know, years down the line, you look and you think where you thought someone was, or was pretending to be, they were far behind where you were at that stage, and you were far ahead. And usually when you come to that realization, it's too late to have done anything about it anyway. So if you can make that connection soon in life and realize I am where I am right now because of whatever factors and also my input. And so the only way to change where I'm at going forward is to do my best. And if I can always look back 
and say I've done everything I could possibly to, to get the best out of whatever situation. You, you can't look back with regret one day. And yeah. I, think, I think that's what people, how should people should be living. But unfortunately, we don't do that. Yeah. And that's what Jean and Cheryl have done, is they've gotten themselves into a situation trying to live according to what they think they should be doing rather than what life has presented them with. And if yeah. you're honest with yourself, you, you won't make so many mistakes. Absolutely. And use sunscreen. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually 79 years old. You wouldn't say. You were very well presented. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sounds good. Uh, in the film, both Penta, he plays your best friend, yeah. uh, Lucas. Um, but you know, Lucas is, is very much the kind of character that, that gives anything, even when he doesn't have it, to give. And Jean, he, he takes. Mm -hmm. um, do you have friends in your life that are like that? Either givers, major, major givers, whether, when, even when they shouldn't, or major, major takers? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do think that it, it epitomizes those two characters. Are epitomized, uh, we epitomize those two characteristics in these two characters that are the polar opposites almost in that sense. But 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 neither character is right. Mm -hmm. Lucas's character is not right either because it's an imbalance. Absolutely, it's a total imbalance, and and uh, and it's it's the one thing that keeps them together because they fill the gaps for one another, and they and they 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 they, they, they truly love one another as brothers and friends. They've been through everything together, mm. you know, comrades in arms, and you know all the nonsense. But the truth is that. Um, you know the difference between them is because there's a there's a lack on either side for both of them, mm. and uh, as we all know, balance is obviously the that's the one thing that that any faith, any religion, any teacher of any worth will teach you is harmony and balance is really what one should strive for. In yes, yes. You, um, and if you have an imbalance of any kind, it's going to manifest in some way. For for Lucas, it manifests in the sense that he um, he's always letting go. Of the things that he really wants most, he's mm -hmm. always uh, letting, um, in this case, Jean win out, and, he, and he's almost gotten to a point where he believes that he is less and he doesn't deserve more. Mm -hmm. Jean's gotten to a point where he believes he deserves the most and the best, and other people, always, he's entitled. He's got an entitlement problem. Mm -hmm. um, huge imbalances, and of course, imbalances in characters is what makes good film. Absolutely. So hopefully, that's what it's that's what it's done here. Is it's completely different characters, both with huge problems. Mm. It's interesting though because they they seem on the surface to be such good friends and so yeah. close to each other. And they are, you know. That's that's the interesting thing is that there's no there's no um, chink in their armor as as a friendship. There's no there's no there's nothing wrong with their friendship. Their friendship is as intact as ever. Mm. It it you know the fact that that they found a because um, in the film there's there's you know the, the conflict obviously ensues between the two of them, but that doesn't mean that they love each other any less. Yes. It's, just, it's just stuff under incredible stress. Mm. But I did Especially at weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Weird emotions start Everyone's stressed you know, at weddings. <laughs> you know, it's a comedy and, and you know, one, one, one pushes the envelope a little bit with reality, but you know, the truth is you go to a wedding, girls are crying because they're not married yet, or they're crying <laughs> because they married the wrong guy, or they're uh, crying yeah. because their wedding wasn't right. Guys are crying because they married the wrong girl, or they, they, you know, they, they're crying because it cost so much, or their wedding wasn't as much and they paid much more. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of, and, and people who've, who've been arch enemies for years, family members become friends again because it's just emotionally such a connecting moment, or people become enemies because th this is the opportunity to drink a little bit more than usual, and, mm -hmm. and the truth comes out, and everyone's in the same room, and the pressure's too much, and you know, whatever the, the reasons are. And that's why a, a, a wedding is just such an incredible um, set up for a good comedy because there's just so much that can and does go wrong. Absolutely. Emotions are all up in the air. So kind of wonder why people mm. get married in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and yet we do. <laughs> um, what's Low like on set when he's written the script? Is he is he quite you know these are my words you need to use them? Not at all. You know I think I think um, Low's been in the business long enough to know that uh, once once. You know, uh, we often speak about it, especially Lo and I. We, we share a philosophy in that um, any sort of uh, performance art is between more than one person is a collaboration um, of, of all elements involved. Uh, the the, uh, the the actors, the, the the director of photography, the sound guys, uh, post production, pre production, all of it, all of it becomes a palette for the director to paint with, and uh, the screenwriter that literally comes places he's color down which is his, his script and mm -hmm. walks away and yeah. the only other uh, need we have for him is, is to is to clarify or to add if, if it's needed but 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 if he doesn't offer up his work it can't become what he's you know it can't be taken to the next level as with an actor an actor comes to set with a preconceived idea of how he wants to play a scene 
he lays it down for the director. The director can either use it as is, or he can add to it or take from it. And yeah. if the actor's not willing to do that, then it's not going to become an organic, growing, uh, um, uh, creative process. And in the end, you'll have a disjointed throw together of, of various ideas, but 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 lacking that, that that binding factor, which makes for a good uh, film and, and and any creative artwork or cumulative creative artwork. So we always very much are, are of the f uh, philosophy that one should work together, try different things. We call it calibration. You know, we like to calibrate a, a scene until we feel it right. You know, and then and then we'll, we'll show it to Z, and, and 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 Z will say, "Wow, that's great. Yes, okay. Well, what if you do that? Because on screen, I had a, you don't know that I'm actually going to do this, so it'll work better that way." Or you'll go, "That's crap. <laughs> try something else." And then we'll be like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> So, so if you don't open yourself to that, then you're in trouble. And as a screenwriter, low, very much laid it down. I mean, I changed things that didn't work for me, uh, other actors as well, because everyone comes to the party packing. You've got to come packing. And if you, don't, if you come there empty, hoping to be full and hoping to fill, you, you're going to be running into trouble. Um, we've come to throw together our various skills that we've honed in other places mm. to, to, to hopefully make something that, that people will enjoy. Yeah. And so you, you need to be open for that and allow for that. Mm. Sounds like it was a great experience working Absolutely. this film. Mm. Absolutely. Very much so. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Nico. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice, Thanks to, for talking nice to meet you. Yes, and, yes, uh, and apologies if there's a garlic oh, no, hanging around us. I hope you had garlic yesterday. <laughs> Did you have garlic? I had <laughs> garlic all day. The people have been playing so next to me like that. So. <laughs> have you, you just flown fun in now just from, from Cape Town? Town yeah. Fun, fun, straight into interviews. Mm, no, it's a glamorous lifestyle. People just don't freaking know it. <laughs> no, it's Fucking crazy. Fucking at five o'clock this morning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are you flying back tonight? Or? Yes. Yeah. You working or something? I am. I'm busy shooting at the third season of a television series for CakeNet called uh, Falei Van Slayers. Valley of Slayers. Valley of Slayers. And uh, it's set in the, the, the while well, we, we film on location in Somerset on Lawrenceford Farm. And uh, I'm a farmer. Believe it or not, a fruit farmer. <laughs> yes, and uh, yes, it's a it's a drama set in the, in the in the Cape Farms area, so you can imagine what goes down. Valley of Slayers. Yeah. Any weddings? <laughs> <laughs> weddings, murders, yes. uh, subterfuge, lies, deception—all the good things that make dramas that happen. Sounds wonderful. Cape Net. On Cape Net. On Cape Net. Yeah. Cape Net. Valley of Slayers. He means but again, son, again. Say soon, do you soon? At the Cape Net screen near you. <laughs> there you got it. <laughs>